this project I will use a 5 terminal relay, such as this one. Let's see how the relay works. We have 5 contacts, 5 terminals, and these two terminals on the bottom are the coil terminals. We use them to energize the relay. The remaining three contacts, two of them internally are connected by a switch, so they are normally closed. And the other pair are normally open. When we energize the relay, when we apply a voltage to the coil, the switch moves from this position to this other position. So these two contacts are now open and the other two are closed. When we de-energize the coil, the switch moves back to the original position. Now it is very easy to make an oscillator using a relay. All we have to do is to connect the normally closed contact to one of the contacts of the coil and then our battery or power supply to the other end of the coil and to the common of the contacts. In this situation the coil is energized so the energy flows to the coil through the contacts and back to the battery. But that makes that the normally closed contact moves to this position and then the coil no longer receives energy. So the switch moves back to its normal position but this closes the circuit again and the switch moves to the other position. And this cycle repeats and we have the oscillation. Here I have the relay. I connected the normally closed contact to one end of the coil and I will apply power here and to the common. And you can see, you can hear that noise. It's a high pitch that is coming from the switch internal to the relay that is moving back and forth very fast. Let's check the frequency. I have the multimeter set to check frequency and let me connect the power to the relay. And the frequency is close to 1 kilohertz. This frequency may be too high for a strobe light, but we can slow the frequency by connecting a capacitor in parallel with the coil of the relay. This for example is of 1000 microfarads. So let's see what is the frequency now. You can hear that the relay is going more slowly, approximately at 2 Hertz. This is because it takes some time for the capacitor to charge, so the voltage starts to increase up to the point where it is enough to activate the relay. The larger the capacitor, the slower the frequency that you will get. Here I am using a 220 microfarad capacitor and a single LED. In a moment I will show you in detail how to make the connection of the LED because this is a mess. But let's see. However, I want to use this LED of 20 watts that works at around 30 volts. So we need to make some modifications because the relay has a coil that works at 12 volts. The coil of the relay has a resistance of around 400 ohms. Because of ohms low, the current through the coil will be the voltage divided by the resistance. The coil works at 12 volts divided by 400 ohms of resistance, this will give a current of 0.03 amps. But now we need the coil to work at 30 volts. With the current stay the same, 
0.03 amps. Therefore, we need a resistance, again using Ohm's law, 30 volts divided by 0.03 amps. This will give a value of resistance of 1000 ohms. However, we already have 400 ohms in the coil of the relay. So we need an additional resistance of 600 ohms in series with the coil in order for the coil to work at 30 volts without being burned. 600 ohms is not a commercial value, so I am using two resistors, one of 470 and another of 120 ohms, which gives a total of 590 ohms, pretty close to the calculated value. So let's connect And we can see that the relay is working at 30 volts with a current of 28 milliamps. The circuit is ready. Let's check the connections. This is the positive from the power supply, 30 volts DC, and this is negative. The positive of the power supply goes to the positive terminal of the LED and from here also to the resistors and to one of the contacts of the coil of the relay. Then the capacitor goes between the two contacts of the relay, the contacts of the coil as we saw previously, then from the negative of the LED we connect to the normally closed contact of the relay. And this point also goes connected to one side of the coil. And finally, the common of the contacts of the relay goes to the negative of the power supply. Remember that the cap is electrolytic, so it has polarity. This is positive and negative. Now let's see our strobe in action. Remember that we can change the frequency by changing the value of the capacitor. Larger capacitance gives less frequency and vice versa. So let's try by adding a second capacitor. Thanks for visiting my channel, I hope you liked the video.